I was in grade school, which was not only a different century, but a different millennium, in the 1950s. The height of knowledge, or at least the accumulation of knowledge, was a series of books that looked like this. It was the Encyclopedia Britannica. It was a set of 26 books arranged alphabetically, and all human knowledge was contained therein. Now, of course, it was almost impossible for any home to be able to afford that, and so you had to go to the library to look it up, or perhaps to the school. It was the whole compendium of what was known in human knowledge in the 50s. The problem was, once the encyclopedia was printed, almost immediately they became obsolete and anachronistic because time and knowledge moved on. And so geography would change. Uh, at that time, there were 48 states. It became 50. At that time, a lot of the African countries were under colonization. They became independent, got new names. So these were extremely expensive, thousands of dollars, but they became outdated very quickly. By the time I had finished my education and became a priest, the sum of human knowledge was contained on this, a CD, a compact disc. They were really cheap, 20 bucks. Almost any family that could afford a computer could have all the knowledge that was in the encyclopedia on this little CD and keep it at home. But also, it was the very same problem. As soon as you press the CD, the knowledge became obsolete, anachronistic, because all it went on. Now we're in the 21st century, and all human knowledge is contained right here. In a little cell phone. Well, actually, it's not in here. It's up on the cloud somewhere, but our access to it is from a thing like our smarter than me phones. And anytime you want to know anything, all you had to say is, OK, Google. And immediately, your answers would come back updated to the very, very moment that you asked it. Never anachronistic, never obsolete. Well, that takes care of our human knowledge, our material world, our bodies. But we are taught that we are body and soul. We are physical and spirit. So although our mental and academic facilities could be satisfied by encyclopedia, CDs, and Google, what does our soul need? Well, for those of the Judeo-Christian tradition, we have the equivalent of the encyclopedia. Here it is, the Holy Bible, Sacred Scripture. This is not a book, it's a library. There are 72 books in there, which is the history of God's dealing with humanity that tells us everything we need to know about our souls and what we are ultimately created for, not this world, but the next. Of course, this was written long ago, and it needs updated from time to time. And so for those of, those of us in the Catholic Christian tradition, we have over the years things published like these, catechisms, that help us about the knowledge of our faith. This is an updated one, Catechism for Adults for the United States. This is what I was brought up on when dinosaurs walked the earth, the Baltimore Catechism number three. And it began going from scripture by asking questions. First question in the Baltimore Catechism, who made me? Easy answer, God made me. Second question, why did God make me? God made me to know, love, and serve him in this world so that I can be happy with him forever in the next. So what do we need for our souls? Not just knowledge. It starts with it. But we have to love and serve. How do we find out how to love and serve? Because scripture tells us God is love. And we who abide in love, abide in God, and God in us. Where do we go to find those answers? Well, this weekend, the second reading. 1 Corinthians 13. Paul's great ode, pain, poem to love. Love is patient, love is kind, love is humble. Love never puts on airs. It first gives us the definition of love, but tells us more. We can't just know it, we have to practice it. Love is not a verb, uh, 
noun only, it is a verb as well. And so if we really want to fulfill what God created us to do, wouldn't be a bad idea to go back to your God, uh, Bibles on your coffee tables, dust them off, and look up 1 Corinthians 13. If we want to know how to know, love, and serve God in this world so that we can be happy with them in the next, read St. Paul's Ode to Love. Know it, understand it, but most of all, practice it. Because as Catholic Christians, our every thought, word, and deed, our every act and attitude is meant to give honor, praise, and glory to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let the Church say amen.